News Channel 5 on your side presents Kaleidoscope, focusing on people who make a difference in Northeast Ohio communities. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. Hispanic Alliance Incorporated provides a variety of services to the Hispanic community. Its executive director, Juan Molina Crespo, is here to tell us about these services and about the Hispanic Alliance Leadership Development Initiative. Later on, we'll hear from Keith Towsley, who will share information about the Mentoring Network. And on the broadcast after that, Eric Sean will explain how your self-talk can impact your life. Talking to yourself, it's a good thing, I think. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Leon Bibb. This is Kaleidoscope. And so we begin with Juan Molina Crespo, Executive Director of Hispanic Alliance. Hi, Juan. Hello there. How are you today? I'm doing fine. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's oh. an honor to be here with you. Oh, the honor is to have you here with us. You and I have chatted about this, but share with us for our audience the mission of the Hispanic Alliance. Well, what's unique about the Hispanic Alliance is that we're not a direct service organization as are many of our colleagues in the social service realm. We offer specific uh, uh, concepts. One is the leadership development program that you mentioned in your opening. We do voter registration and civic engagement and get out the vote drives, information and referral. And we have now spearheaded a concept called La Villa Hispana, which is the transformation of the West Side into a place space uh, destination place uh, that values Latino culture, traditions, and folkways as a destination place for people from the region to come and visit and spend their money. When you make a reference to the West Side, you're talking about the West Side of Cleveland. Yes, sir. I is, is that pretty much the area that you serve? Well, you know, interestingly, we serve all of Cuyahoga County. We have colleagues that we work with in Lake County, Lorraine County, Franklin County, mm -hmm. and even as far south as Hamilton County. However, with the 40,000 Latinos that live in the city of Cleveland, close to 90% of them reside on the west side, yeah. where our offices are located. Exactly. What kind of services do you provide, Juan? Well, You've been doing this for eight years now. What kind of services? Yes, the, the Hispanic Alliance Leadership Development Initiative, HALDI, that is our premier program. And, and uh, WEWS Channel 5 has hosted our group here several times, and we're very grateful for that collaboration. HALDI is a, um, a program that uh, encourages emerging and young Latino talent to uh, gain the necessary leadership skills. But the difference with our program, Leon, is that it presents them in a cultural context. That is to say that it presents them in a Latino reality. So we recognize that the traditional leadership skill levels and curriculums sometimes don't often fit with how it is that Latino culture immersed itself. You were telling me before we started the broadcast today that there are a lot of people who've got a lot of great skills in, 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 in the area they came from before they came to the, the, the continental United States. That's right. They have, but, but sometimes it's hard to transfer those skills into this United States culture. That's Speak to that a little bit. Thank you for the question. Yes, what we see in our office is folks that come in, migrants, immigrants, and refugees, most of them from Latin America and the Caribbean, that come to Cleveland and often come with a set of skills. The, the stereotype that these individuals come without any skills is just that in our experience. Some of them are professionals, doctors and nurses and lawyers, and they cannot fit into the American culture because of certification needs, uh, because they don't know the environment. And so what we do is we try to uh, uh, help them fit into uh, American culture so that they can begin to work, provide for their families, and contribute to the community here in Northeast Ohio. Mm -hmm. I want to put a phone number on the screen where you can get more information on everything we're talking about with Juan Molina Crespo, Executive Director of Hispanic Alliance. It is a 216-661-4249, or you can go to Hispanic Alliance Inc. Dot com. We've got that on the, on, the on, on the screen as well. And there's another one, Haldi, H-A-L-D-I-C-L-E-V, HaldiCleave.org. If people make a phone call 
to you. What, what do they say when they call you? Do a lot of people call and say, Juan, I, I don't even know where to begin. Let me tell you my story. And then what do you do with their story? We have a network of member organizations, 22 member organizations, where we uh, uh, make referrals depending on the call mm -hmm. and what it is that their particular need is. So, for example, if someone comes in and is looking for employment but doesn't have a resume, for example, we then use one of our member organizations to help them create a resume to give them some job leads in their particular field so that they're mo better equipped with uh, with finding a job the other thing that comes people come through with small children and just need information in terms of which are the better schools in the community where can they get some daycare uh, for their children mm -hmm. right. and so those are the types of calls that come into our office primarily and then we typically refer them out to our member organizations do you have seminars and things like that cohorts or something like that where people can get together and and, and you, 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 you you put your information out on the table? We do. We host a series of uh, seminars uh, and information fairs, uh, particularly targeting the Latino communities, but it's always open open to all residents of the city of Cleveland and beyond. Mm -hmm. So you kind of, you, 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 you don't limit it to Cleveland. It's anybody who can get to you. If they're, if they're in the sound of your voice right now, they can make a phone call. That's to you, absolutely and you right. And you can get you can get them. Um, uh, in, in our final 30 seconds, what, what do you see in the in the crystal ball? What what's your next step? What, where do you go from here? Well, I think that our focus is going to be voter registration, get out the vote drives, and then responsible civic engagement. Because if we continually look at uh, the Latino community's failure to participate at the numbers that are uh, that exist in the electoral process, and then we will continue to be uh, uh, on the margins of society in terms of the building that political capital, which we all know is critical in terms of being able to contribute and to benefit from being uh, an American citizen. And yet, at the same time, the numbers are increasing. Yes, the largest sir, minority group in the United States yes, is the Hispanic, the Hispanic population. Yes, it is. Which includes a lot of folks from a lot of different countries. <laughs> different countries, <laughs> and, and that's a whole. That's a subject for uh, another another kaleidoscope. Yes, sir. We'll talk about that. One day. Many thanks. Juan Molino Crespo, Executive Director, Hispanic Alliance. 216 661 4249. You see at the bottom of the screen, you can get more information on everything Juan and I have been talking about. He is a good friend. Always good to see you, my friend. Thank you. Take yeah, care, my, well. my pleasure. Be well. Be well. I'll take a break in just a moment. How you can make a difference in the life of a child. We'll talk about that after we do this first. You're in touch with Kaleidoscope. I'm Leon Bibb. Always good to have you with me. Well, the Mentoring Network is currently working with students in the Bedford City School System. Its co-founder and executive director, Keith Towsley, joins me this afternoon to tell us more about the Mentoring Network and explain how you can become a mentor to one of the students in this network. Good to see you. Well, Thanks for having me. With us, Thanks for having me. Yeah. Tell me about the Mentoring Network. Well, exactly what, what are you doing? Well, we meet with uh, uh, several groups of students throughout the Bedford School District. Mm -hmm. uh, it's an organization we're in our fourth school year currently. And, uh, you know, it's really started off as a grassroots effort, just uh, some individuals who want to make a difference and impact, and it's become an organization. So we're, we're, our, our, our mission is to instill character, confidence, and leadership through mentoring. Uh -huh. And it may, you're making a difference in the lives of these young people in, in the Bedford City School District. Yes, it's, it's extremely humbling, honoring. Um, and there's so much joy that comes with being a mentor. You're the founder. Why did you found it? W what led you to this? Well, you know, I was, uh, I'm a business owner, and it was always my desire to do something greater as my business would grow. And uh, this is going back about eight years ago. You know, I, I really had this nagging desire to do something greater with my life. Even though I had a business, I'm a husband and father, uh, I had this desire to do something greater. There was something more I was meant to do. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't sure what it was. And for uh, several you know, months, it just kind of nagged at me. And I got an opportunity to mentor a kid in foster care. And I was going into a situation thinking, you know, I can, okay, trying to talk myself up. You know, I can, I can help this young man. You know, I can make a difference in his life. And what impacted me the most was uh, I thought I was there mostly for him. And it changed my life yeah. in the process of It mentoring. changed you. It changed me completely. So... You know, it, it, it's contributed to my business, helped me be, be a better business owner, a uh, better father, better husband. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, and really it gave me a vision. My vision became 
I wanted other men and women throughout Northeast yeah. Ohio to share my experience. You talked about, before we started the, the, the broadcast today, you talked about building character yes. these young men and young women in yes. the mentoring program in the Bedford City School uh, District. Mm -hmm. What do you do to help them build their own character? That's a great question. You know, we, we want them, well, we introduce them to character, things that you and I might take for granted, mm -hmm. like the idea of setting a goal. The idea of being disciplined, the idea of, you know, um, you know, learning what it means to to respect somebody, and then we encourage them to apply some of these character traits, and 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 put put them put them around a group of people that will support them, encourage them through that process, and we want them to dream. So this month, you know. Uh, we are working with them with their own dream boards. We got pictures right on the screen right here. These are some of your kids. Yeah, so these are some of the young men. We've, this is last year. We have a tie ceremony at the end of every year mm -hmm. where we uh, teach them how to tie a tie and in the process, you know, kind of explaining what each uh, piece of the tie means and, uh, you know, helping them, um, you know, uh, really kind of congratulate them for completing the program yeah. at the end of the year. And you work with the girls as well. Right, and with the girls we do a ti tiara ceremony mm -hmm. and just, you know, uh, just help them become young women, you know, understanding their worth as young women. Yeah. Now, this is in Bedford, Be Bedford City Schools, so you work with the school system on Correct. this. Correct. Yeah, they're, they're, they partner with you. In, in, in a, a, a how is that working so far? And are there, are there plans to expand this or are other school districts saying, hey, Keith, uh, you want to come over our way and talk to our kids? Are you getting that? We are a little bit, yes, and you know we, we feel that we're trying to develop a, a model that we can export mm -hmm. around Northeast Ohio, around the state, and eventually around the country. But so we want to make this work right here, exactly. And then we can bread it, uh, uh, broaden it out a little bit. You've got some money from the state. How is that helping you? Some grant money came from the state of Ohio. Yes, it's been a tremendous help. You know, we just we've been able to increase our staff. We've been able to do some things we've always wanted to do, and we wanted to, this one this year. One of the biggest initiatives we had was really connecting with the parents yeah. in the community. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that just takes a lot of legwork, and we want to involve the parents into the process. It's it's vital to you know we, we just want to come alongside their their children and make that impact with them. So Let's put, uh, we've got your email, uh, your uh, website rather on, on the screen. Startmentoring.org. Now, can parents? Get on that. Get on that website and get more information on what we're talking about, and maybe get their children uh, connected to uh, the mentoring, uh, the mentoring program, the mentoring network. Yes, we're looking for parents. We want parents involved. We're looking for local businesses and churches that might want to partner with us. And we're most, most importantly, we're looking for more mentors. We need mentors. Uh, we currently have 36 volunteer mentors that come in every week, and uh, but we have so many students that hey. Hey, can I can I join the program? Can I be a part of this? And so we have the ability to serve many more students. We just need the mentors and that, and to help these kids get on the right get on the right track and stay on the right track. Correct. I, I like the idea of, of, of the tie ceremony, mm -hmm. teaching boys to tie a tie. Mm -hmm. that, that's something that you may take for granted, mm -hmm. but 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 uh, uh, a lot of boys don't know how to tie a tie, so they just need somebody to help them get started. Yeah, it's simple. I mean, uh, things like how to shake somebody's hand, you know, how to look them into the eye, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how to respect, you know, how to yeah. respect somebody in your conversation. Simple things like yeah. that are things we take for granted. Keith Towsley is executive director of the Mentoring Network. You can make mo get more information on everything he's talking about by going to startmentoring.org. By the way, UBU. Tell me, take 15 seconds and tell me about the UBU program. Yes, the UBU program is our main program at the middle school uh -huh. where we have mentors come in every week. And the U, it stands for You Be Yourself. We want to help these young people um, be confident in who they are mm -hmm. and discover who they are yeah. and then encourage them into that. Startmentoring.org. More information on everything Keith Towsley has been talking about. He's executive director of the Mentoring Network based in Bedford City School District. Many thanks, Keith. All right. Thanks, Good to see you, thanks so much for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Good to have good people on the broadcast. <laughs> Taking a break. I'll be right back in just a moment. This is Kaleidoscope. You're in touch with Kaleidoscope. Kaleidoscope. I'm Leon Vip. Always good to have you with us. Eric Sean is here empathic empowerment coach and author of a book called on broken wings eric joins me now to explain how you can use self-talk to change your habit and your life good to have you with us it's good to be with you first off what's an empathic empowerment coach my job is to help you discover the truth about yourself mm -hmm. um, i'm an empathic because I've, everybody has different 
uh, energy, mm -hmm. different vibrations. I'm generally pretty good with connecting with people's vibrations to help them to um, see how they individually uh, think yeah. and what they do. We, I, one of the things I said in, in introduction, you, you talk about self-talk, yes. the importance of self-talk. Where'd you get that concept from, self-talk? Looking back over my life, I realized that a lot of the decisions that I made, my self-value was based on the conversations that I had with myself. Um, the things that I, I achieved, the things that I believed that I deserved. Um, the things that I believed that I deserved was in direct correlation with uh, what I told myself my value was. So I've always believed that what we tell ourselves, whether we realize it or not, we hear it. Mm -hmm. And we don't hear it as we mean it, we hear it literally. Yeah. You grew up in Cleveland. Absolutely. Ups and downs in life? A lot of ups and downs. Ups and downs in life? Yes. And, and, and that got you into this? Yes. In, in, into this self-talk. When, when, you, when, you, when we talk to ourselves, what, what should I be saying to myself when I talk to myself? We should realize that at our core, we are powerful beyond imagination. Mm -hmm. We can accomplish whatever it is that our mind believes and sees. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think a lot of times we realize we have three sources of power, mind, body, and spirit. Um, we don't know how they're all designed to work together. The spirit sees. Mm -hmm. The mind's job is to logically figure out how to make that happen, and the body's job is a means of trans transportation. When we, when, we, when we speak those words and we hear those words, that, that, that solidifies that thought a little bit more in the brain and in the body. Absolutely, and, I, and I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of the things that I do, I'm also a personal trainer, um, so I carry a lot of this out in, in one of my personal training studios. I'll have a client who wants to lose weight, but they spend all day telling themselves how fat they are and how hard it is for them to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Consequently, they struggle to lose weight. Yeah. A lot of times if we envision ourselves as we want to be, and we put that energy into becoming that person, we successfully accomplish that. But if I tell myself I'm fat, I believe I'm fat and I'm gonna stay fat. So you gotta tell yourself I'm gonna lose this weight. Absolutely. Okay. We wanna imagine ourselves already at the point yeah. of being thinner. You're an author on Broken Wings. Yes. Tell me about the book on Broken Wings, well, well, what it's about and what made you write it. The book is a personal uh, diary, basically. Um, it's an autobiography of the different experiences that I went through in my life, mm -hmm. how I judged them then, um, and in hindsight, how I realized how powerful they are into creating um, this perfect person that you see in front of you. Mm -hmm. You grew up in Cleveland. I grew up in Cleveland. Ups and downs, as we said a couple of minutes yes. ago. And, and you draw upon those experiences and you put them on the pages of this book on broken wings. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What should we keep in mind when we, when we, uh, when we uh, Self-talk. I mean, you can self-talk yourself into some bad stuff too, right? I mean, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, so so you got. How, how do you know when when you're on the right path, doing the right thing? Is is there a is 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 that in our is that in our conscience or is that in in, in our gut to do the right thing? Do yeah. we know what's right and wrong at its core? Within us, Leon, we have um, a directional system. Um, that knows exactly what we're supposed to be doing, where we're supposed to be heading, and what our purpose is. The key is, is to learn how to get in touch with that. Once we get in touch with that, we know whether we're on the right track or we're on the wrong track. Mm -hmm. You know, most people try to solve a lot of different things in life, but the only thing that we really need to focus on is understanding ourselves more, resonating with ourselves more. That's the true work. Yeah. Um, with the DSD, Deliberate Self Dialogue, a big part of it, it involves visualiz visualization. Um, it involves affirmations. Um, you know, if I tell myself I'm powerful enough, I'm going to believe it. Put a, put, do, you, do you put family members around you or friends around you who are thinking in the, in, in the right direction? Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm asking a it's, question it's, of which I know the answer yeah, to. It's, it's all the information. It's all about the information we put inside of ourselves. And if they're, and if they're bad influences, toxic people, get rid of them. Absolutely. Get them out of your life. And the closer we become to ourselves, those people will just leave. Yeah. Water seeks its own level. Yeah. Where can we find the book on Broken Wings written by Eric J. Price? And you use the Eric Sean now. To tell me the story because we've got Eric Price as the author. You're going by the name Eric Sean. What's the difference? I was, um, I was adopted when I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. um, when I was 45, maybe, I had this, this um, realization that I was, that I was 
not Eric J. Price. And Eric J. Price was somebody who was connected, his value was connected yeah. to his mother, mm -hmm. connected to his adopted father. Um, and so I, I kind of healed the inner child in me and decided to change my name back so to my birth name. So you're back to Eric, Eric Sean. Where can we find Unbroken Wings? We've got 10 seconds. Unbroken Wing we can find on my website, eric-sean.com. Mm -hmm. um, and I will make sure that you get a copy of it. eric hyphen Sean. Dot com. Yes. E R I C hyphen S E A N dot com. Or you can call, and there's an 800 number. Can we put that on the screen? I wish you we already have. 800 210 3818. More information on everything we're talking about. Okay. I'm talking to myself and making, and making good sense, Eric. <laughs> Thank you so much for being I appreciate on the you having me. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Good to have you on the broadcast. Marsha Mockaby, the Urban League, after this. One of the things. I Time now for Marsha Maccabee of the Urban League of Greater Cleveland, who always has interesting thoughts. What's the thought today, Marcia? I'll tell you, interesting and sometimes too many thoughts, Leon. But um, I'll tell you, one of the things that I uh, worked with my staff on recently, we had a staff retreat. And I thought I'd share it with the audience today because I think it's pertinent to things that happen in the lives of most of those in our viewing audience. And that is the importance of relationships. And so one of the things that uh, I talked to the staff about is that the theme for our work at the Urban League internally this year is where relationship meets opportunity. It's at that connection that great opportunities and great uh, uh, partnerships mm -hmm. begin to exist. And so, you know, we've been focusing on how do you build relationships with individuals, with organizations, etc. And that's where when opportunities come up, people think about you. People think about your organization as opposed to folks that they don't know. And maintaining a good relationship mm -hmm. with people who mm -hmm. are helpful and may be able to help you or you can help them. Absolutely. And the mutual part, you just raised that. It's got to be mutual. You have to bring something to the table and others bring. It's not all just get. It's give and get. You know, a lot like marriage, yeah, right? It's a lot <laughs> like marriage. you got to give, you got to get. That's if you right. don't give, then That's you right. don't get. That's exactly right. That's how life is. kind of unfolds it. that way. It does. You know, you and I ought to take this philosophy out on the road. I think we, we should. Could. I see a book coming. <laughs> We've right? got a good relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. An opportunity yes, do. is out there. Thank you. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you, Leon. Always words of wisdom. That's going to do it for us. For Marsha Maccabee of the Urban League, I'm Leon Bibb. Take care and be well. This has been a presentation of News Channel 5's Kaleidoscope, a weekly public affairs program brought to you in partnership with the Urban League of Greater Cleveland.